So running your cargo warehouse will earn you, if you say did five runs, um, collecting three crates successfully for each of those five runs, uh, that's 15 crates total. When you sell those crates, you'd be making $135,000 profit. That's after you take off the original cost of the crates. $135,000 profit. And it'll take you, say, 10 minutes per um, source mission, and then, say, 10 minutes for the sale, so about an hour's work. You won't be able to just source, 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 unless you have two small warehouses or two warehouses of any size. Uh, you'll have to source and then have a pause while you do something else, while the five-minute um, countdown timer runs. But you can make a profit of $135,000 in an hour of crate work. You're also making money doing headhunter or sightseer at the same time so $135,000 is the number of the amount of profit what you're adding to your bank account to earn faster now what you want to do is save up for a bunker my recommendation is the next big thing you purchase after your office small crate warehouse and then the buzzard is a bunker you will need to upgrade parts of that bunker to make it an effective business but once you've done it I, for me this is just about the easiest way of making money in the game and it's also fun so I'm standing on top of my bunker and my recommendation is you buy the Chumash bunker and I'll tell you why to buy a bunker you go to Maze Bank foreclosure and we're just going to look at bunkers. And all the blips of everything else went off the map. And the reason is, we're only looking at bunkers, and all the bunkers are out in the countryside, or at least not in the city. If you bought the starter pack, the Criminal Enterprise starter pack, you, I believe, got this bunker, Polito Bay, Polito Forest. And it is 1,165,000 initially. But that doesn't come with the upgrades. You also then have to upgrade the staff and equipment in the bunker to produce at the best rate, to produce money at the fastest and most effective rate. Or to produce weapons which are going to sell for money. So the upgrade costs are the same, it doesn't matter which bunker you buy. The cost initially is just for the location. My recommendation is this bunker, Chumash. And this one is 1,650,000. So not that much different, 1,650,000 versus 1,165,000. We're talking about 500, about half a million difference. There are other bunkers available. Some are more expensive than the Chumash bunker. Some of them are great deal more expensive. But the Chumash is, for me, the best one. The other alternative would be this, the farmhouse bunker. It's very expensive. It is, in fact, the most expensive of all the bunkers and for no real reason. The, once you've got the location, everything else about it is the same. The benefit of Chumash is it is the nearest bunker to the city, which is where you're going to be selling everything. As you see, if you are up here at Polito Bay and you need to d deliver weapons to the city, which is what you're going to do when you do your sail missions, you will have to drive a vehicle, and it's always a vehicle, all the way down the coast road, which is covered in traffic and it goes up and down and it's kind of busy and you can crash and stuff along the way all the way down here all the way down here until you pass the Chumash bunker at that point you've got to where you started all that time spent to get to where you start with the Chumash bunker almost all the sales are going to be down here into the city especially the ones with a tight time limit so the sale missions have a time limit by either 15 minutes or 30 minutes and if you have uh, <clears throat> a dune buggy to sell uh, and you'll have five drops in the city you've got to drive all that way to get as far as Chumash and then continue on into the city and you have 15 minutes to do it I do it usually in about 13 minutes from Chumash um, I can do it quicker depending on where the drops are and if I get lucky but let's call it 13-14 minutes so I'm doing it with a fairly tight time limit I don't think you'll get off five drops successfully consistently driving from Polito Bay. If you did get given the Polito Bay bunker, 
before you upgrade anything, you can buy the other one instead. You'll get a trade-in price. You'll get some money off for selling the Felicio Bay Bunker and buying Chumash. The most expensive bunker over here, the farmhouse bunker, is also fairly near a main road. There's a kind of a dirt track that you can follow here. And then there's also the main road. You can kind of skip across the fields and then head down the main road. The Chumash bunker is literally right on the main road. You, you'll drive about 10 yards and you're on the main road. So it's the easiest one to deliver from. And as you see, it's also that much further south. So you're saving yourself that much drive every time to start to get into the city. There is one sales mission where you are selling from a Marshall off-roader. It's a big monster truck. And for that one, you will be up into these hills. But there's no particular advantage of being farmhouse or chumash. Sometimes it's these hills, in which case chumash, you're right next to it, you'll get it done in five minutes. Sometimes it's right over here, you'll still get it done in the time limit from chumash. Slight advantage maybe for farmhouse, but I think it balances out across that mission, and I think all the other missions are easier from chumash. Sometimes with the dune buggy sale, you get a, the initial drop here, and again, it's much, much closer to chumash than to any of the other bunkers. If you're coming from farmhouse and you get your first dune buggy drop or dune buggy drop over here, you've got to drop right across the city. You actually do get to choose with the dune buggy. You choose the order of your drops. There's also an insurgent pickup truck drop where sometimes it's, again, the first drop, it might be right up here. And if you're doing the Chumash bunker, you couldn't be closer. If you're doing the farmhouse bunker drop, you've got to drive all the way over there to do your first drop. And in this case, you don't get to choose the order. You have to go in the order they give you. So to me, Chumash is the best one. The initial cost of the bunker, 1,650,000, but you will need to upgrade the staff. That's just under $600,000 and the equipment for 1,175,000. Your total cost is just shy of $3,400,000, just a little bit lower than that. But once you've got it up and running, you'll have the most efficient business in the game. So here I am, and this is the Chumash Bunker, from my map now. I'm standing outside the Chumash Bunker. As I say, sometimes you get a drop, it's literally right down here on the beach. So that's your first drop. Um, depends on what the mission's going to be. If you were coming from Pilito Bay Bunker, which is, I believe, right up here amongst all this woodland, you've got to drive to the main road, all the way down the main road but when i say main road it's a coast road it's not like an interstate it's a coast road so it's a uh, a local road and on down and on down and on down and then eventually you'll get to your first drop i think that takes five minutes by itself just driving that distance and that's five minutes of your precious 15 minutes you need to make the drops actually for the inter insurgent it's 30 minutes but for other drops most of the other drops you only get 15 minutes and then the other drops will be scattered around the city, sometimes down on the docks, sometimes up in these hills, sometimes right down here. But they're all in this kind of area, except for the Marshall drops, which are always up on the hills, and in this area, through to here, and up here. For that one, it doesn't matter whether you're at the uh, farmhouse bunker or the Chumash bunker, it's going to be the same kind of distance. So let's go inside the bunker. I'm standing on top and you would never actually stand on top of the bunker. It doesn't benefit you in any way. You go in just by walking up to that uh, dot. And when you first set up, you'll go through a process. Uh, talking to Agent 14, you've sold you the bunker. It's completely empty. Um, you have to go off and get some supplies. It's just a single vehicle. Drive it back to the bunker to get set up and then you will have something looking a bit like this. Bay 1 is where you will park a vehicle if you come in with a vehicle. Sometimes the vehicle will go back outside with you. There are some vehicles I believe you can actually drive around inside the bunker. Uh, you can buy things in here, but I would initially say just invest in the business. When you've got more money to waste, then you can play with all the other stuff. But just go with the business to start with. So your business is run from the computer, which you can see on the mini-map. And I just tootle along here. Oops, I've got hung up on the drill press. Tootle up here. 
and here is your business computer. Log in as a CEO or as a MC. I recommend C well, right now you're going to have CEO. MC if you're selling with friends, they will get a bigger split, bigger payout. If you're selling on your own as I do almost all the time, CEO is fine. And it gives you options to get away using your buzzard when you finish. We resupply and then we sell. As you can see, I've done a lot of sales, almost entirely successful. I've once or twice managed to dump something in the in the river or the canal. And I've made a lot of money out of this. This is your total earnings, not including the cost of the original stock. You can steal the supplies, but there are reasons why you would do that at points. But my recommendation is most of the time you're going to just buy the stock. So we resupply, buy supplies, confirm and then we sell stock. While we're selling that stock, the supplies are on the way. So we're selling to Los Santos, 210,000 total, and the profit is gonna be 135,000, which is the same profit as you get from doing all the work you have to do. Okay, these buyers can't be seen to touch down on US soil, so they're picking up the shipments at altitude. Get your Marshall off-roader and get to the site. And indeed, this one is the Marshall off-roader drop. Uh, all the work you do with that warehouse, you get the same profit for 15 crates as you do from this. So this is forming a fairly neat arc around here. I'll start off by heading to this one. And although it tells me to go up there, I'm actually going to go up a gully through the mountains here and save myself a bit of time. Marshall's one of my favourite drops. It's kind of really fun to bounce around in this vehicle. If people get in your way, they generally get out of your way very quickly. And if it's night time, I tend to turn my headlights off because I can see better the terrain further away from me if I haven't got the headlights on. They don't benefit me in seeing anything. Uh, moonlight is quite sufficient. So I'm driving up a gully and you'll, you see it on the mini-map. You see where the gully is. <laughs> I don't usually crash on this route. It's because I'm talking and trying to drive at the same time. And up this right-hand fork. And there's a crash barrier, but actually the marshal is so big you can just pop right over that crash barrier. We don't care about that. Some vehicles will get stuck on that, so you have to be aware of the, where the crash barriers are. And already I can see that first bit of smoke. Now, one thing to watch out for is trees. You will get stuck on big trees and crash into big trees, but little bushes, not. So be aware, if it looks like a tree, it's probably a tree. If it looks like a bush, you can just drive straight through it. Once we do our first drop, we're going to start getting pursued. That's our first drop. And now we're going to get helicopters coming after us. My habit is just to ignore the helicopters. I don't think they do enough damage to me to worry about. They will shoot at you and they will do you some damage. But as long as you keep moving swiftly enough, they won't do enough damage to kill you. If they do, not a huge problem. You simply appear near your marshal, run back and hop in again. Now, if you want to, you can shoot at the helicopters. If you actually knock them out of the sky, there'll be more helicopters. So it didn't really benefit you that much. They will just send some more after, after a period of time. If you want to be tricksy, you can try and shoot the guys out of the helicopters. If you leave the pilot alive, but shoot the guys in the back, they are the ones that are leading out with rifles trying to shoot at you. If you manage to shoot those successfully out of the back of the helicopter, then that helicopter stays airborne but is no longer going to be able to do you any damage. So the body around, but you can just ignore it. It's not doing any damage. My habit is just, as you see, just keep going, because really, look what they've done so far. I'm already three drops in, and they've barely scratched me. There's one of the helicopters. I see my drop point right there. This one off. Done. Last one for me. Where is it? Over on top of that arm of the hills. Generally, you want to follow the ridge as much as you can. If you get up on the ridge line and then stay on the ridge line with caution, that's going to be the quickest route. Sometimes they'll have them split over a couple of different sets of mountains, maybe across a road or something. 
just get back up on that ridge as quick as you can. And for me, I actually went over the top there, so... Here's the bridge line. When you order a resupply, it takes 15 minutes for that resupply to arrive. Make sure it arrives before you log out of the game, or do, say, go AFK, because if it hasn't arrived, they can't be working on those that product. Once it's arrived, it takes 2 hours and 40 minutes. Sorry, 2 hours and... Yeah, 2 hours and 40 minutes. that to turn into product and I think if you work that out that is 140 minutes two hours would be 120 no, two hours and 20 minutes yeah two hours and 20 minutes to produce the supplies which is 140 minutes or a thousand dollars per minute of production time that's when you've got the full upgrades and there we go that was done in a very short period of time that bunker once the supplies arrive is going to continue producing away for me as I'm a CEO at the moment I can bring in a buzzard and go off and start start doing my crates again, or something else. You don't want to do missions that take you out of the world um, until that supply arrives, and because it that, won't arrive. And I believe, is everything sold. Next time you see those weapons, they'll be on the news. So that was Bunker Explained, as far as I think you need to know to begin with, and a Marshall Sale Mission.